Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at some C and C engraving patterns. So here's what I have to show today. I've been working on creating a workflow for creating these patterns that are engraved with a desktop CNC mill. Um, I'm using the Bantam Tools desktop CNC, and I created these uh, really, really fun, <laughs> it's hard to focus here, but these are, this was created with the Fusion 360's manufacturing workspace, and these are patterned um, operations, engraving operations. So if you're trying to create a seamless, repeatable pattern on a piece of acrylic, you might want to uh, check this out. I think I got a pretty good workflow. So I got this piece set up here as just the demo. Come on camera, let's focus here. And I, I, I applied it to these, uh, these pieces of acrylic that I made for my DIY MIDI fighter. So here I have this really fun hexagonal pattern that's, uh, that's been engraved here. Again, this is CNC engraving, not laser cutting or laser engraving, very, very different, I think. And then on the top here, I have this fluorescent pink acrylic. And then I have these, these fun circles that overlap and create these diamond patterns. So if you're trying to do something like this, um, stay tuned. Um, so yeah, let's jump into kind of the background uh, on, on how I tried to achieve this originally, right? So let's switch over. So there's this website from Sun Chaser Studio, and it lets you create these geometric patterns with these sliders. And you can also download patterns um, from free websites that are vector SVG files. And my idea was to just bring in the pattern into Fusion 360 and then try to engrave them, right? It seems simple enough, but what I ran into is a lot of selecting. So in Fusion, I would have to select each individual circle and instead of doing that and, and spending a lot of time selecting things, I figured there must be a way to patternize uh, engravings. And that's what I, I found how to do. So let's jump into Fusion 60 and we'll recreate this pattern with the sketches and then actually run through the operations for CNC milling. So let's jump into Fusion 360. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is model my piece of acrylic. So if you've never done CNCing before, this is probably a good, uh, a good take on it. So let's uh, create a new component. I'm just gonna call this acrylic, hit okay. The next thing I'll do is I'll bring up my user parameter window. I have it set to a hotkey as U, but you can uh, hit the, the S key and then type in parameters and there's change parameters and that'll open the same thing. Just a little tip there. So the first parameter, I'm gonna hit the, the plus button and I wanna call this my acrylic thickness. All right, and I, and I really recommend making a user parameter for the thickness of material because acrylic tends to be different. These three pieces of acrylic that I showed you, um, well, they all have different, they all have different thicknesses. So I'm just gonna stick with three for now. I'm gonna stick with three. And then I'll hit okay, and then that way we can change it easily whenever we need to. All right, the next thing I'll do is now that I'm inside my acrylic component, I'll create a new sketch and I tend to model as if I am modeling on the spoil board of my CNC machine. So that's gonna be on the floor plane here, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is I have the Bantam Tools software open. This is the software I use for my CNC. And you probably wanna pick um, the origin, wherever your origin is for the Bantam Tools desktop CNC. It's here on the lower left corner, that is zero, zero. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll start my rectangle sketch here. And for the dimensions, uh, I have a pretty small CNC, so I'm gonna put 100 by 100, and that's easy to work with. So now that's it set up, I'll hit E on my keyboard, and that'll select that profile, and I will make it go um, three millimeters. Well, I'm gonna type in acrylic, because we already set the user parameter. And that way, it's three millimeters, and if I ever change that user parameter, this, will automatically, this extrude will automatically get updated. So cool, I got that updated. I had that set. The next thing is to create a new sketch, so I'll drop down this and look at my sketch here. This is gonna be my profile acrylic, and I need to make a new, um, I need to make a new, uh, a new sketch, right? So where should the sketch be? So whenever you're engraving stuff uh, on a piece of material, like I have modeled here, you, def you definitely wanna pick like the top surface. So I'm gonna select that top surface and then just start sketching right on top of there, all right? So, uh, so what we're gonna do, what pattern we're gonna make, it's gonna be different per thing, but I'm gonna go with this circular pattern because I think it's kind of easy to do. So I'll, I'll, I'll grab my circle sketch and I'll just start sketching my circle. How big, how, what's the diameter? I'm gonna go with 10 millimeters just because it's a nice kind of uh, rounded number. I'll make another circle with the, uh, 
with the circle tool. And um, by the way, it's the letter C on your keyboard for circle, C for circle. Uh, again, 10 millimeters here. Now what I need to do is I need to position this thing um, so that it is constrained to this origin. So what I'll do is I'll say, I want a sketch dimension. That's the letter D on my keyboard. I'll select that center there and then the center of our origin and then kind of work my way down here. And you can see here that it's it says 10. So I'll apply that by clicking and then, uh, well, it's set to 10 and that's what I want. So I'll hit enter. And I'll do the same thing, but for the opposite end going this way, right, on my X axis. And you can see that's also 10. So 10, hit enter, good. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna offset this uh, from the circle. So from this center to this center, I want that to be five. And I'll do that um, for the Y axis here, going up here, make that five. So now I have these uh, this circle that's overlapping uh, the circle right in the center there. And that's really the way that this is really put together. If you break down this pattern to its core elements, its core profiles, this is all you really need. You need two circles and that's it. So that's pretty cool. So um, one of the ways I like to visualize my pattern, because this is really hard to kind of, how does that make a pattern? Well, you can use the rectangular pattern in the sketch shortcuts window here. I brought that up with the S key. And now I can type in rect for rectangular pattern and select that. I need to select these two circles. And then I get these arrows and I can click and drag these arrows to create, um, to create, to create that, that, uh, that pattern, right? So as I move it, it's spreading them more further apart. I want the, the distance between those entities to be uh, 10. Right now, if you look at distance type, it's set to extent. We want to change that to spacing. So we want even amount of spacing. How much spacing? 10 millimeters, because that's, uh, that's the diameter that we set our circles to be. Cool, so I got that. It's, it says negative 10 because it's going in, an, in, in, that, in this way. If you were to go positive, it goes the opposite way. It's just the way sometimes things are. And so the next thing I want to do is, is make some more going up this way. So how, how much do I want to offset these? Same thing, 10 millimeters. Now, you're, don't hit OK because you really don't need these sketches. It's a great way to visualize them, but you're not actually going to select every one of these circles. We're just using this as a way to visualize is the distance between my entities make the pattern that I'm envisioning. In this case, yeah. So I'm going to hit cancel. And now I know 10 millimeter is the spacing that I want for my circles, right? You see why I picked these circles now. It's, it's, it's fairly easy to kind of come up with the with the pattern with them. So that's really it. I'm going to hit OK sketch. I mean, I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to name this circles. And uh, I'm going to keep these open. And that's really all we need to do in the design workspace. Next, we need to jump on over. So if you click on design, there's a manufacturing workspace. I'm going to switch to it. And the first thing we need to do is, set, is create a setup, right? So I'm going to click on this right here. It's a setup. And now I need to select my stock point, right? And we were talking about the origin like of our Bantam tool CNC. You can see where it is here in the lower left corner. So I'm going to go ahead and select the lower left corner. What, the x-axis is, is, is where I think it is. It's going across like that. And the y-axis is going that way, going up and down. So far, so good, right? And then um, z-axis is going up and down. And that looks good. The next tab right here, so everything here is fine. I've selected my thing. I don't have to worry about anything else here. Under the stock, though, you do want to change some things. Now, if you're working with wood or or um, if you're working with wood or metal, um, then you it's okay to have a top a stock top offset. But when you're working with acrylic, at least I have found, you never really want to have an offset to your top acrylic. the the whole The whole width of your acrylic, you, you just don't have an offset. You you wouldn't face it either because it's acrylic. And if you face a transparent piece of material of acrylic, it's no longer going to be transparent. So I'm gonna set this to zero. That was a long way to say uh, set that to zero, but there you go. If you want an offset on your sides, you could do that, but I don't really foresee needing one because I'm just doing a pattern on a piece of stock here. So I'm gonna put zero. So that, if you go down here to dimensions, now you see this 100 by 100 by three millimeters. It's exactly, our model is exactly the same dimensions as our stock material. That's what we want. A lot of times, you you know, when you're like I said, when you're working with wood, you're gonna have a different um, set of stock. But we're, because we're engraving on a particular piece of acrylic here, this is what we want: 100 by 100 by three millimeters. So let's hit OK. Now that our setup is is uh, set up, <laughs> uh, we want to create an engrave. 
and engrave is found under the 2D uh, tool set here under the milling tab, um, engrave. Or what I like to do is hit the S key and then just type in engrave, and that tends to work pretty good. So I have that, I'll select my engraving, and now the first thing you want to do is select your tool. Okay, so um, shout out to the Bantam Tools uh, company because they have, uh, they gave away a, um, they supplied that you could download a tool library, import that into Fusion, and then use their, their tools already set up. So depending on your machine, you might have to create your own tools or import a library from the manufacturer. This isn't gonna cover that because um, that's, that's another 30 minutes. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select um, the engraving bit that's already predefined uh, pre for me. Again, I grabbed this from the, uh, the, the Bantam Tools library that you can download for free. So select. Now when it comes to feeds and speeds, um, this is default stuff. I do tend to reference um, uh, the Bantam Tools documentation, they have some pretty good settings here for their feeds and speeds when doing acrylic. Um, so if you'd like that, you can check out this article here from them. Um, but we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on actually uh, selecting things. So let's pretend like we have all our settings and, and feeds and speeds optimized, right? We have the right tool selected at least. So now we're going to go to the geometry tab. And this is where you want to select the things that you want to engrave. Now, as I roll over here, it's giving you a nice little tool tip. It's telling you, error, you don't have anything selected. Yeah, I know, I haven't selected anything yet. So the thing that I really wanna stress here is that like, if you're trying to engrave something and you're not sure why you can't select it, this is probably why. Anything um, that can be engraved must be a, a closed boundary, right? This toolpath requires a closed boundary. So you can see here like the letter T, that's a closed shape. So if you have a bunch of lines and they aren't creating a shape that's closed, that's not gonna work. So in my case, when I was trying to make like uh, just a standard uh, pattern of lines, I wasn't able to do that in this method because the parallel um, operation is what you wanna use. We're not gonna cover the parallel operation because that's very limited to just lines. I'm gonna do these circles. So with that out of the way, now you get an idea that, hey, there's a caveat here with the engrave tool. Whatever you're trying to engrave must be an enclosed boundary, so a closed shape like this circle. So I'm going to select the circle, the first circle, and then I'll select the second circle. And then from there, um, you want to hit your Heights tab. And your Heights, well, the one you want to focus on is all the way at the bottom, where it says Bottom Height. You want it, this is this offset here. This is where how it's basically think of it as like, well, how deep would you like your engraving to be? Would you like it to be a, a go down a, mil, a millimeter? Well, in this case, I'm going to put 0.4 millimeters, 0 0.4, because I just tend to like that number. You might like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. It doesn't really matter as long as you know that this is where you want to set that, the bottom height. And then another thing to look at here is where it says the top height. Um, that is where uh, it is from, right? It's saying from bottom height. It's a little hard to explain, but basically it's like the bottom height is the top surface of your stock. How you want to go down negative 0.2 from the top of your stock, and that's how deep your engraving is. It's a little hard. You can roll over these and read through it as you'd like. Um, but remember, this is engraving, so the bottom is really the top surface of our, of our stock. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's why I have a negative value because we're actually going further down. Because if this was zero, then you wouldn't be milling anything. You'd just be milling on top of the surface and it wouldn't actually go down any. So that's why I have this set to negative 0.4. All right, I think that's it for the passes. There's nothing to do there. Same thing with linking. I'll hit okay. And now we can actually start simulating this. And by default, here you get a simulation. Um, though the simulation model tends to overlap your existing model, so it kind of it creates these weird visual effects. So you can see the gray here is what we modeled, and the green is what's simulated. So I'm going to turn off the model by using the little eye icon here, and you can see I can turn it off and on. And as I'm turning it off and on, you can see the full um, kind of simulated um, visual here. It looks kind of terrible, but uh, that's just the way it, it tends to look. And another thing to note here is that, like, look at if you if you if you really um, if you look carefully, those are two kind of Pac-Men. They're not actually like the, the circle pattern isn't actually intersecting each other. 
So why is that, right? This is my first clue as to like, there's something wrong here and there's something that can be done. So I'm gonna click simulate and then that lets you simulate what your, your, uh, your toolpath is gonna do. So I'm gonna hit the play button and you'll see here that it, it's not actually doing a circle. It's doing a circle with like a moon piece and then doing it again. So again, we'll play it again. It does like a circle and then like half of a circle. It's, it's really weird. Okay, so I'm not sure why it's doing this, but it's just the best that Fusion can do um, with this. So if we want that effect where the circle is actually you know, intersecting the second circle, instead of selecting those two circles in that one engrave operation, let's make two engrave operations. So first what I'll do is I'll right click on our first engrave, I'll go under the uh, geometry tab and just hit X and, and clear them out. Now everything's gone because I need to turn that eye thing on again so I can see everything. And now I'm just gonna select one of these two circles, just one. You can see here, chain is selected and hit okay. And now when I simulate that, I think I might've crashed fusion. Yeah, I crashed fusion. Whoops. Um, you definitely wanna save um, before. I don't even know what to tell them here. Just like um, I tried, I guess, send report. And, uh, you know, we'll have to do it again. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened there. It, it was pretty simple. I wasn't doing anything too complicated. I was literally selecting a circle. What do you think, guys? Should I keep it in the tutorial or <laughs> remove it? If uh, you're watching, uh, let me know in the comments if I should have left this in or should have taken it out. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, nothing was saved, so I have to start over again. Oh, wait, we got to rec unrecover. We got to recover file, hit open. Oh, this is great. You know what? I bet Fusion crashed because it was trying to auto save this. I've had it happen before. I'm quite used to it. <laughs> All right, so let's go back into, uh, into this. All right, click on the engrave under geometry deselect that and select just one circle, okay? Now I'll hit okay and hopefully it doesn't crash. <laughs> All right, it looks good now. So now when we simulate this, you can see that's what I want. I just want one circle and then I want another circle, right? So that's what we're gonna do. We can, we can duplicate this with the, you know, Command D or Control D or right click and then there's uh, somewhere in this big list. Here it is, duplicate. There it is, took a second. Right click, edit, go to the geometry and deselect it and then select that second circle and then hit okay. All right, so to simulate them both, well, it kind of already did it for me. I can see at the end there, look at that. That is actually what we want. Again, I have to kind of hide the models to show you the full model, the full simulated model. And that is exactly what we want. You can clearly see that there are intersecting circles and it's, it's kind of important. Like if I would have gone through the other way, it wouldn't have achieved that same effect. So now when I do simulate, I wanna make sure that the setup is uh, selected and then simulate. And then when I play through them, you'll see that one circle retracts up and then it does another circle and then it retracts up again. So if you hide, you can kind of make out. So the color, the, the paths are color coded. The actual path is blue and the retraction path is yellow. And then um, I think this is like the, the movement when it's retracting the red one. But uh, it's just important to note that they're, uh, they're color coded for a reason to separate them. So that is what we want. So now that we have uh, these two circles, we need to patternize them. So we have our two things. And now I wanna create a pattern of copies of these and, and then really kind of fill it out with this thing, kind of how we were patternizing our sketch. Now we got to patternize our engraving. So let me hit uh, close here. That turns off the simulation. You could also hit escape. I like hitting escape. So with the shift key, you want to select both of these. So I'm going to hold down shift and select both. Pretty universal to hold down shift, but right click on those two selected items and then say uh, right here, it says add to new pattern. So that's gonna stuff it in a folder. Now I have a new uh, window here to play with. I can't see anything yet. So I'm gonna turn on my models again so I can actually see stuff. And the first thing it wants me to select is nothing. <laughs> right here where it says direction, it says nothing. That's kind of funny. 
Uh, so right here is this pattern type, just to throw it out there, it's defaulted to the linear pattern, that's a rectangular pattern, but you could also do circular, a mirror, a direction, and a component. I'm gonna stick with linear. And then for the direction, uh, I want my origin to show up here. So I'm gonna, under the model window, there's your unsaved document. <laughs> under the unsaved document, there's our origin hiding. So let's bring it out. I'm gonna select the red line, which is our X axis. And then you'll see here it says X in the direction. And then uh, there's some options here, flip direction. You can click that if you want to go the opposite direction, but for now it looks pretty good. Uh, the spacing, right, for our direction is 10 millimeters. Hey, that's what we want. And then our number of instances, you can click to increase it or add a number. I don't know how many, maybe 10. You can see here that it's going beyond the stock and you could do that, but then you're milling air. So I'll, I'll stick with nine. And that way I, I'm going just to the edge of my acrylic my stock and that's just one direction you can do an additional direction because it says so right here so let's check that and then uh, same stuff you can flip the direction if you like you have your um, your spacing here and then your number of instances so just like we did with the x-axis oh I have to select an axis so that'll be my y the green line the y-axis right and uh, instances also nine. So just by looking at it, you can see like, hey, that's finally the pattern that we wanted to create. We wanted to create those overlapping circles that create kind of these diamond shapes. So once I hit okay, um, I, th I think Fusion would have rendered it out, but it didn't. So I'll do, I'll select that pattern and then go to simulate and um, I guess simulate it. Now it's hard to see with our model. So again, I have to hide the model. There we go. And if you don't want it, you can just hit this, go to the end of the toolpath, and you'll see this fully modeled, fully rendered simulation here. And that's kind of what we want. Very cool. That yeah, looks great. Yeah, so we have these nice overlapping circles that create our pattern. Now, one of the things that I found while doing this is if you take a note, if time is, is, is a value to you, <laughs> you might want to optimize the machining time. So how can you do that? Well, if you look at the yellow line, notice that I, my, my tool head has to go up a lot. And as you increase more instances, you're going to increase more machining time. And all it's doing is just going up. So you can control how far it goes up. So instead of going a whole 10 millimeters up, let's change it. So I'll hit close or hit the escape key, which I should have did. Um, under our patterns, we can still modify our engraving, right? So let me modify this engraving. Under heights, you see where it says retract height? I'm gonna change that 10 to a one. And do you see where it says retract height? I'm gonna change that five to a one. And then I'll hit okay. I'm gonna do that same edit to engrave two. So engraving, edit, go to heights, change that 10 from retract for the clearance height, change it to one. Retract height, change that to one. We're gonna leave the feed height alone, okay? And everything else alone. So I hit okay. And now when we simulate that, we'll see how different our yellow thing looks. So let me, instead of just, just go to the end and you can see here, yeah, that's, that's definitely gonna save us some time. Um, how much time I should have noted, but I, <laughs> definitely some time, maybe significant. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you can do machining time, but I never find it to be accurate, so I won't even bother with that. But hey, that's a little tip. But you don't wanna go any lower than one millimeter. Now, why why do you say that? Well, uh, let's jump over to the camera here and take a look at what happens when you have 0.1. Well, it looks like I went, I didn't go high enough, right? So what happened here is I, I went pretty deep, but because I, I had such a low retraction, uh, value. I actually draw. I actually scarred the surface of my acrylic, and basically messed up this whole piece. So you can see here that all of these were scars, you know, because I didn't tell it to retract high enough. So be careful not to go any lower than one millimeter. That's my little tip there. Trying to save time, and you end up um, causing. Yeah, you know, the opposite of saving time, right? But that's just what happened here. These are little patterns, uh, little little diamond cubes that I created here. 
And uh, it would have looked cool, but uh, there you go. My mistakes, hopefully you don't make that mistake here. Okay, so jumping back into Fusion, you can see here, um, that's, that's how we can create this cool geometric pattern. Uh, and that's just circles, right? So if you wanna create hexagons, it's a little different, but I, I have another document here where we'll kind of step through it. Um, or at least I had a document. Let me open it again because Fusion crashed, remember? So let's uh, pull out that. It's actually part of my three by three acrylic button box. And it says, you have a backup. No, I don't need to see that. I didn't actually change anything. All right, so under the manufacturing workspace, I have a couple of uh, fun patterns that I set up here that are pretty uh, specific here. So this is a nice one. I call this the cube hex. They're uh, hexagons that have rhombuses inside them. So here's what it looks like. It's basically what I showed you with the scarred um, piece of acrylic, but like finer pitched and, um, and more of them, right? So the way I was able to create this one is that if you look really carefully, let me just play it actually. What I actually ended up doing was creating these, these uh, rhombuses shape independently and then selecting those um, those rhombus shapes uh, in in the uh, in the engraving. So if you look at the engraving, it's just two of them, just like how we had before, um, and then they're just patternized. So instead of selecting, so let me right click on one of them, edit, and show you what's like what's being selected here. I have to show and hide my model several times to show how that looks here. So it's um, case, bottom, sketch, and then this is the sketch that we want to show, the hex cubes. Yeah. So basically, I drew a hexagon, and then within the hexagon, I drew the rhombuses so that they could be selected independently. So it's a little tricky to select them, but you can select them out, and I selected them. So you can see here, three selections, one, two, three shapes, and then I did that. Uh, for the second one here, um, three shapes, right? And those three uh, rhombuses create that hexagon. Uh, so once those were created, then I was able to uh, just select those and then um, create a pattern with them. And then that's how you can create this. So it really came down to like, how do I optimize my engraving profiles so, uh, so that I can uh, create the expected tool path, right? It's what it comes down to is to like simulating it and then really breaking down your pattern into its bare profiles. Like what, how can I make this thing? Um, so uh, if folks want to see how I sketch that, let me know, but it's a little bit of a, of another 30 minutes <laughs> because the circles were, were, you know, uh, were a little bit more easier than like constraining five different shapes. Uh, but that's just a quick look at how I was able to create these really fun uh, geometric patterns um, in Fusion 360. So if you are looking to do similar stuff, um, I hope this is a helpful tool. I know I'll be referencing this tutorial um, in the future <laughs> because I tend to relearn how to do engraving each time I jump back into CNC. And I can't get my, my focus to work ever. <laughs> Maybe that, it looks so much better in person too. It's kind of funny, but that's it. Let me know what you guys think. I hope uh, you guys learned something new, but until next time, remember to uh, make a great day. Bye folks.